Turpins, and I'm Demir's grandmother, and we are so happy to be here. We thank all the staff and all the players, and especially the fans. We are having the time of our lives. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. <laughs> A great afternoon to be a Terp. This is two days in a row. Maryland 75-59 over Northwestern. Bruce, to go 10-0 at home, it's been a spectacular home season. You know, before the game, and our guy Rick Jackson, come over here, Rick. This is the big dog, our sponsor. We thank you so much. Before the game, Rick, I said to Wayne, I said, I kind of feel about Donald Terry today. Donald Carey. He was, he was unbelievable today. What a great game. I think 16 points, threes that were just backbreakers. And uh, how about Jameer? Oh, right? Jameer, who we put first every team? Game. Who we put first team, Boo Booey or Jameer? I think he answered that. Four points for Booey well, and 18 for Jameer. Well, it's, you know, let's be fair. It was here. We were on a roll and all that stuff. But to beat that team by 18 points. But you knew they couldn't keep shooting lights out the way they were. They were like 58% in the first half. Well, I tell you Northwestern, what, Western, and they finished at 46. So we really accepted the defense. I felt like it was a little John Tillman coaching. Uh, the Turks got the 73 with 18 point lead, and they put the ball in the freeze button. All right? They just really did. Wayne, your take on it, baby. My take? If you, as Mason wrote, uh, near the end of the game, if Maryland played all their games here, they'd win the national championship. It's just that great a home court advantage. It, it's not, others have said in some of these games, we get so many free throws, it's the crowd energy. We make shots at home, we don't make on the road. It, it's not one of those things, it's all of those things that combine to, to be unbeaten at home in the Big Ten. The only loss this year here is to UCLA. That's because I wasn't here for that game. I had to miss the one. Well, let me tell you something, okay? The, the thing about it that's so crazy, Ohio State has been in such a slump, was pummeling Illinois today at home. We've got to go to Ohio State on Wednesday. And then Penn State. We have to take care of business. Yeah, we have to to get that two-round bye and also to get moved up to maybe a five. I don't know about What do you five. think? Uh, I don't know. I do like the fact right now they're in second place in the Big Ten. We have a tiebreaker with Indiana. Uh, that gives us that, that extra buy. The Friday game instead of playing Thursday is huge. If you want to win the well, you know what? We're going to talk about what happened here and what happens next after this official word from Rick Jacklitz and Rakim Jarrett. Thanks for the sponsorship all year. You're watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. Your turn. Vanguard of Texas a and Hey, Rick Jackson. Who's your favorite number one term? Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know, Rakeem Jarrett's always been my favorite number one. Hey, Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jacklish Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service, plus you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jacklish Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the Big Dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the D.C. metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. Call Viner Forgates at 301-251-2900 or on the web at vinerforgates.com. Yeah. Four minutes to go. Fourteen point lead. Today by his other IE judge, Jordan Brewster, and Nyla Davis. 
Jessica and Jabari Young and Pete Larry. Fans, let's give it up for number one, Jabari! Back here on the floor, NX Thursday Center. We have Sean Mosley jumping in on the big dog post-game show. Who did you play on senior? Uh, senior day, we played Virginia. We lost in overtime. Uh, it was a tough loss for us. It was a great atmosphere, and obviously, uh, we didn't get the win, but uh, my four years here was great. Now, what year were you when you that shot right down here in Dallas? Uh, that was my sophomore year, his senior year. And, um, Packed house, rolled out, no rush. So it was, it was amazing to be a part of that that, that historical moment of um, beating you uh, for my first time uh, and, and interpreting. Let me say one thing, Wayne. I go back a long way to I was there the day that he signed St. Francis yep. to come here. You remember? Yep, yep. I was his first interview as a Turk. I just want, first of all, you know he's a great guy. But he was one of the most well grounded players that Maryland's ever had. But staying here, I think the truth is you're about 6'2". Yeah. He uh, played like he was 6'6", six, six, and the program said 6'5". I, I had 6'4", I had a push. Oh, right, right, I'm right. six four and a half. But a so super good. career. He rebounded. He would guard the center sometimes. He'd bring the ball up. A great shooter. Gary Williams just loved him. He'll never forget that top game against Tom Brazil. I appreciate Corey it. Uh, Lewis, you yeah, well, we don't talk about it. Scott Van Pelt said we're not allowed to talk about this. Yeah, yeah that, that that haunts me to this day. So uh, because that was our our, our chance to make it to maybe a national championship game. This is over. So, you know, so having that opportunity and being in that position, that man's March Madness. So. Alright, so what'd you make of this atmosphere in the game today against your question? Oh man, it was a great atmosphere. Great game. Could Maryland have played better? Could Maryland have played better? I don't think they could play. A win is a win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, they almost won by, what, 20 points or so? 70. What was that? 75. 75? Yeah, so that's the 16 points. But it was over with five minutes left. But I, I love the atmosphere. I love the grit and the grind the guys have, I think, towards that last kind of like eight game. Uh, Span they did an amazing job coming out here fighting and obviously uh, protecting home court, which is which was amazing for me. You know, down the last maybe one two games at home probably. As you see, Kevin Willard one, one game. game. One game. You know, watching you in here before per game, you could be the mayor of college ball. <laughs> I mean, I just love it here. You know, interacting with the boosters and obviously the fans that have been awesome my four years here and coming back home. Uh, this I call this home to me uh, from Baltimore. But coming back home and just seeing the familiar faces when I was going to school here, it's amazing and, and still seeing that, that support. It's, it's, it's great, especially having you two guys around. Yeah. Hey, I remember you guys I, when I was here. Sean made a great point. Yeah. We were talking about whether or not some of these guys might come back for that COVID year because the NIL money. And he said he would have registered. I'd have registered. Yeah, I told two legs of my ankle in my senior year. So I played at 70%. All right. So I know you have to go, and Russ obviously got to give an MB logo on there. What are you doing now? What's that logo? So my logo, uh, we have a nonprofit called Mostly Basketball Incorporated. Back home in Baltimore, uh, we try to get the inner city kids, especially the youth, um, different outlets so they can get off the streets and obviously have a home away from home outside of school and outside of their home. And we've grown from 25 kids to 65 to 85 kids throughout two, two and a half years. So it's amazing just having the impact. Me being a local guy, inner city kid, and kind of giving back to Baltimore and the community, which is great for us. That's, that's great. And uh, Sean, you're always welcome on our show. I, tell you I appreciate that, uh, man. That's great. And, Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to get you incorporated in my radio stuff. Yeah, so, just, let, just let me know. I appreciate anything you guys. Anything I need or myself can do to help you, we're always here, man. Uh, Maryland people are always out for Yeah, my guy. Uh, appreciate you. Yeah, All right. Hey, All right. Thanks for being yeah. on. Bruce. It's another, it's another it's season to wrap up. But you know what? Not really. We're just starting. We're going to the new season now. Right. Hey, that that tournament, right? Can this team make a run? Oh, yeah, I think I think with Coach and the way that he demands uh, on, on defense. It starts on the defense end. And I think they have everything going into that, that March run. I mean, we know how it can get. It can get shaky, but 
I think I, I like my Terps against anybody for that next level right now. All right. We will see you next on a remote show after Maryland plays Penn State on Wednesday night. Ohio State, Ohio State, and then Penn State is Sunday. But we will see you soon. It's a great day in college football.